Hi, so good afternoon. This is Tracy from Marbella Dream Living. I hope that everybody is well. Thank you very much for joining. We do actually have a few more attendees um, that are expected. So we are just going to wait a few more minutes just to, to make sure that everybody is fully on board. And then what we'll do is we will get actually started with the webinar. But please do make yourselves comfortable. Make sure that um, you've got plenty of battery if you're on your phone or if you are on your laptop. And then we can make sure that we go through. OK, so just a couple more moments. Sorry, a couple more minutes. Just waiting for a few more attendees as uh, we did have a very good registration and maybe they're just sort of finishing up. So we'll be with you very, very shortly. Hi, so good afternoon. So this is Tracy, Marbella Dream Living, and a very, very warm welcome to you on this beautiful sunny Spanish day. Thank you very much for attending. Really appreciate it. As you can see, we've started off with the backdrop of Marbella behind us. It has changed considerably. So there have been quite a few different things that have been occurring in the press recently. And what we wanted to do today was um, add a little bit of reassurance for our clients so that you are a little bit more aware of everything that is actually going on. So as a company, a lot of you will already know about us. We've been around for a very long time. The two managing directors started the, uh, well, they started in real estate way over, and they're going to kill me for saying this, over 30 odd years ago, pretty much probably closer to 40. So you can imagine their experience that they actually bring to the company is, is quite phenomenal. Marbella Dream Living, as you know it today, started in 2010, and since then it has gone from strength to strength. So we are very visible on the main high street as you are in Puerto Banus, in between La Sala Restaurant and the Bull Ring. So we have really good um, offices for our clients to be able to come in to have a chat with us. As a company, we pride ourselves on being very open, very transparent and very um, honest with our clients. So again, this is why we wanted to do the webinar today, just to draw attention to a few things. As you know, in the press, what they tend to do is they tend to over-dramatize. So everything goes into a little bit of a, a sort of a panic. So we just wanted to do a little bit of reassurance today around the Golden Visa. So the Golden Visa itself was actually introduced in 2013. The reason that it was introduced was following sort of a, a micro crisis to encourage more people to invest into property. So the idea was that you would purchase a property over 500,000 euros, or you would invest into sort of government stocks and bonds and, and that kind of thing around a million. So that was the, the general idea of it. In between the period of 2013 from its introduction, to be honest, not as many people actually took advantage of the golden visa as was expected. It was kind of touted a little bit as being a Willy Wonka golden visa, um, you know, the, the ticket to the magic factory kind of thing. But overall, less people actually did decide to take advantage of the visa than was expected. But it didn't stop investment into Spain. So regardless of the investment amount, many, many people have actually continued to invest more than 500,000, more than a million or less than 500,000 and not actually taken advantage of the visa. So the visa itself, the idea would be that it opens up the opportunity for people to be able to live for longer periods in Spain without any kind of restriction. So prior to uh, Brexit for many UK um, citizens, it really wasn't relevant because we were actually part of the European community, part of the EU. We could travel backwards and forwards throughout Schengen countries without any impact on to us at all. Since the changes, obviously that has made a little bit of a difference. So the, um, the golden visa became a little bit more pertinent for a lot of people. As you've probably seen in the news, there has been a little bit of unrest with regards to property prices. And for locals, they feel that as a result of the Golden Visa, it has priced them out of the market and not providing them with the opportunity to invest. That it has opened up the doors for many more international investors 
and left them out in the cold. We all know that this is actually not really the case, that um, a lot of our investors do start from sort of 300,000, 350,000, and there is a very good, strong local market. Um, in different parts of the Costa del Sol, less properties are available as a whole, and that has been from the international market being involved and obviously taking advantage. Many, many people did invest, they bought multiple projects and uh, multiple properties at a time, maybe to invest to rent out or to actually reform and then to resell. So it is understandable, as you can probably perceive, why the local market do feel that they've been edged out a little bit because of the influx. However, the volume of people that actually took advantage of the golden visa, bearing in mind at this current time, let's use the UK as an example, there are over 303,000 um, expats, let's call ourselves that, living in Spain, and under 5% of those have actually taken advantage of the golden visa. So many were able to become um, what we would call a resident, prior to Brexit, quite simply because we were part of the European community. That has become a little bit more difficult following on from Brexit, so that the rules and regulations are a little bit more strict, but they are perfectly possible. And we've had many, many clients that have decided to go down that route and just to become a permanent resident. Do not worry, you do not need to give up your um, British passport or your American passport or wherever you, you're tuning in from. Um, you can retain that passport, you just become a tax resident in Spain. So that's the difference. Um, so basically with the, the swing in property, Spain has now decided, um, you know, thanks to the, the prime minister, Mr. Sanchez himself, he has decided that he's gonna win basically withdraw the golden visa. We're not yet aware exactly of the date that that's going to take place. So many clients still, if they're in the process, possibly still apply for the golden visa and also many clients um, will be able to for a few months continuing. It may well be that it only comes into effect for next year. We don't know the exact details on that. I do want to point out that we are not tax advisors, we're not financial advisors, we're not qualified to do so. We're also not uh, legally qualified either. So this is general information that is available to, to anybody. If anybody is a little bit unsure of anything that I've covered today, we have fabulous lawyers that are in the background that are more than happy to have a more in-depth conversation with you about your personal circumstances. So 144,000 properties are being sold on average every year um, around the Balearics, the Canaries, and 31% of that is actually to non-residents. Um, but just 2% of those um, in that year are to, so have actually taken advantage of the golden visa. So the press have really tried to expand and have really tried to, to make a, a massive big story out of this. And basically what they're doing, trying to do is it's also like fear mongering a little bit between clients. And it's absolutely not necessary. There are different alternatives. So a lot of clients are outside of the Schengen countries. Um, which means that they are limited to the Schengen visa. Now, the Schengen visa is done on a 180-day period. So you can actually stay in a Schengen country for 90 days within every 180. So if you are an investor, you will not be impacted by the golden visa because you do not need to be in the country for more than the 90 days. A lot of clients where it is a second home or it's gonna be a holiday home, Again, what they do is they just uh, download a Schengen calendar and then what they can do is they can work out their actual visiting days. It then coincides with school holidays, with Easter, with Christmas, with summer holidays, etc. But for investors, absolutely no impact. Now, what about other people that do want to be able to live here? Many of our clients now are working from home. It's far nicer to be based in Spain, looking out at those beautiful sunny skies and not have the continuous rainfall that I know many of our Scandinavian friends have had. Certainly our British, our Irish, our Scottish, for sure you guys have had quite a few months of rain. One thing we definitely not, have not had recently is, is the volume of rain that we require. So why not work from home and actually sit in a home office in a beautiful apartment or villa or townhouse 
many of the new communities, so the new developments that are propping up across the whole of the coast, actually now provide a co-working area, which means that you can actually enjoy with your family, your holiday home, you can go down to the pool, you can do all those nice things, go off to the gym, whatever it is that you need to do. But when you need to work, you have the privacy and the professionalism of a co-working area. So what you can actually do then is go down, have your meeting, you have high speed internet, and you are not impacted by the family and the family are not impacted by you. So you don't have the children creeping around trying to be quiet or washing machines on or TV on or whatever it is. So it does make life considerably easy. So because people are now able to work from home, what they can do is they can use the, um, the Nomad visa which actually is, as long as you are not earning any kind of money in Spain and you have um, an income from outside of Spain, it actually does make life a lot easier. So a growing number of our clients have actually decided to go down the Nomad Visa um, route because that was introduced by the Spanish government to encourage people who are working non, um, not in Spain rather, who are working remotely for non-Spanish companies to take advantage of the property market over here um, and to take advantage. And of course, it's, it's another revenue stream for them. So a digital nomad would actually pay tax in Spain at a fixed rate of 24% um, on the income you return up to uh, 600,000 euros. Income above that, unfortunately, you are taxed at 47%. So although you are, would be a resident for tax purposes and you would pay Spanish national insurance, digital nomads do not have to pay the Spanish wealth tax. So it's actually a nice little get out free card um, on that as well. And then British citizens on the digital nomads um, do not pay tax on their income at all. So this is a really good way of actually being able to live here, to work here, and to be able to um, accommodate your tax circumstances so that um, it works for, for you and for your family. The other one, of course, is the biggest alternative, which is the non-lucrative visa. Now, this is um, probably the most popular amongst our clients at the moment. We have a, a good selection and a good mix of the Nomad visa as well as the non-lucrative visa. So this is popular as it allows you to reside in Spain without any kind of limit. So you're not restricted by the Schengen rules of 90 within 180 you can stay here um, you know unlimited but it means that you have to be able to show that you can accommodate yourself whilst in Spain without the need to rely on the Spanish government so what they're asking for is for the first applicant to have a minimum of 28,800 euros to be able to support yourself so what they're looking for, so what the Spanish government are looking for are for people, therefore, that are not relying on them, that will not be wanting to have um, what we call para, which is the um, sort of Spanish dole, um, will not need to take uh, any kind of medical, all those kind of things. So you have to have private health insurance and the private health insurance has to be for the full year. It cannot be an insurance policy where you pay per month, for example. You just have to prove that you will not be a burden to the Spanish government to be able to apply. Then what you will do is you can have that visa for a year and then you can reapply and you can renew it for up to four times. Sometimes it is renewed for two years and then another two years. And then at the end of the five years, you can then apply for residency. With everything, there is never a guarantee. Um, with the permanent residency, there are a few different hoops that you do need to jump through. And again, you do need to prove to the Spanish government that you are not going to be a burden to them. Borden, what on earth Borden, um, with uh, their facts and figures. So it just makes it easier for the government to encourage people to come over. And then, of course, there are normal working visas. A work visa will be issued if you can prove that you are the only person that is qualified to be able to do a job that a non-Spanish national can actually do. If a Spanish uh, national uh, or somebody who is resident here can also do your job at that level, 
then the work visa will not be applied. So the work visa is probably a little bit of a tough one, but it is actually a different way around as well. And your company would actually apply for you. They would provide all of the documentation so that um, you could actually go for the, the, the work visas. So there are a few different alternatives. The basics are that probably most clients will go for nomadic. A lot will go for the non-lucrative visa, but also many people just feel that it doesn't apply for them. Or what they will do is they will invest now for the future. And then what they will do is they will apply for residency when they decide that they're actually going to come and permanently live here in Spain. So hopefully that has given you a little bit of an overview. As I mentioned earlier, we're not lawyers, uh, we're not tax accountants. So individual circumstances obviously will vary from person to person. But the biggest thing is to not worry about the golden visa being withdrawn and to take the press with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Um, you know, they over-dramatize over things as we all know. Um, and it's always best to seek advice. As I said earlier, we do work with many different lawyers. We also work with financial experts. We have a lot of people that over the years have assisted our clients and actually done such um, an amazing job for our clients, really ensuring that the, the decision that's made for them is the right decision. The decision to withdraw the golden visa is of course a lot more complex than, than we're sort of putting it across, but the biggest one is the explanation on the actual property market. Concerns that the program was driving up property prices, making it difficult for locals to be able to afford their homes. So you've got the alternatives, non-lucrative visa, digital nomad visa, to be able to work remotely for a foreign company, enjoy Spain. Short stay um, Schengen visa, which is a visit to Spain for a short stay or for property hunting. Of course, that's where we come in. It's always best to go with a reputable company that know what they're doing and they're talking about and listen to you. So whoever you do decide as your agency, hopefully it will be Marbella Dream Living, but if you do go with another company, just to advise you that um, you do just need to stick with one agent and they can actually access everything across the whole of the coastline. You don't need to be working with different agents and it'll avoid a lot of confusion for you. Or of course, you can do like we've done here in the office and you can go for your permanent residency. So investing in Spain, why? We have such a stable economy. We also have a very modern infrastructure. We're easily access, as, very easy for me to say, easily accessible from different destinations around the world with most companies flying directly into uh, Malaga airport. And of course you do have Gibraltar airport as well as another option. So if you invest, it's a growing economy. There's so much going on. The rental demand for quality housing is increasing every single day. We as a company are constantly, um, we've got so many owners that their properties are all fully rented out already, but we also have a lot of clients that are looking for rentals and we have a lot of clients that are looking for investment. So at the moment, the market is incredibly strong and it is growing every single day. It's a thriving tourist destination. We are incredibly lucky that we have a microclimate here in the Costa del Sol. So we have a huge mountain range on one side and then we have the coast of Africa. So we have Morocco directly across the water from us. Believe me, the sunsets and sunrises that we, we get of an evening along the coastline are absolutely stunning. But you can imagine because you can easily get to so many major cities throughout the whole of Europe very, very easily and around the world, including our American friends, it does actually make a massive impact. So you can see why investing here without the golden visa is still quite necessary. There's a lot of long-term growth. Um, the Spanish market has a very rich history. Um, there's so much potential and opportunity here. We've got cultural richness. Um, you know, we've got longer life expectancy. The Mediterranean lifestyle is just so much healthier. And of course, you have really good capital appreciation on your investment. So sometimes here in the Costa del Sol, we do get kind of in, included in Spain as a whole. 
However, between the mountain and the sea, we have our own little bubble. And the bubble is not about to burst anytime soon. It's continuing to grow and continuing to thrive. And there's still so much interest from around the world. So please don't allow the, the um, abol abolishment of the, the golden visa to put you off from investing and making this into a holiday home. I can guarantee you it's absolutely worthwhile. So anything that you do need to know um, about visas, I'm happy to try to help in any way that I can. The team are also on standby to be able to help you as well. And like I said, we've got some great lawyers that are absolutely prepared to have a chat with you. You can explain your personal circumstances to them. And what they will do is they will find the best solution for you, depending on your circumstances. The same with tax, whether it would be better to become tax resident, or of course, whether it's to stay in your, your home country, declare tax there, so on and so forth. So there's lots of uh, great professionals that are on hand to be able to chat with you. Now then, if it's about real estate investment, then absolutely. Please reach out, please contact us. We're more than happy to help in any way that we can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask anybody that does have any questions or anything like that, please, please, please pop your, uh, I think you can actually put your little hands up um, and then ask any questions and I will be happy to try to answer them as much as I can. I'm just gonna double check that there's nothing I need to press for you to be able to do so. Okay, questions, okay. Now then, I have a hand up from Raquel, but <laughs> this system is a bit new to me. I worked with it about five years ago, and then this is our first webinar on this subject. So you might have to just bear with me for a moment while I, I work out the, ha ha, here we go. I have some hands up. So I have Raquel with her hand up. Um, and then I think Raquel, can you send me a, a chat message? Yes. Okay, right, and I know that Ron is, is patiently waiting with his hand up as well, and haha, there we go, I've got a nice hello, thanks Jennifer, and um, yeah, Raquel, to, to answer your question, um, lawyers only act for the client, so um, any recommendations are purely because the clients have actually recommended lawyers to us and we've built up different associations with lawyers over a period of time. So whenever you speak to the lawyer, your conversation with them is absolutely 100% confidential. So just to, to confirm that Raquel, yes, it is just completely. So that's clear, that's great. Um, and then Ron, let's try and find you because I think you did have your hand up as, as well. Um, and let's see if we can get that chat open up for you. Okay, Ron, it's not letting me. Nope, Ron, maybe you don't have a question. Maybe not, I think maybe it has to put the question mark up. Um, anybody that does have anything and you're unable to kind of let me know now, because I think I am, I'm not the most technical person. And I do apologize. Anybody that is having any problems or does need anything further, then absolutely please feel free to, uh, to contact me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of my contact details up onto the screen for you now so that um, you can take a note of those. But I am just Tracy. I'm Tracy at MarbeyaDreamLiving.com. My name is spelled the T Tango, R for Romeo, A for Alpha, C for Charlie. 
I for India, E for Echo. I'm just a little bit different. And it's at MarbeaDreamLiving.co. Uh, sorry, dot com. I'm moving countries now. And of course, my mobile is 0034-627-187032. We have recorded this as well, so that um, you know anybody that needs anything, you can always look back onto this. Um, what we'll do is we'll try and do a little bit more in depth. What we would like to do is invite one of the lawyers to actually do a small presentation for you with a bit more in depth about the visas. But today was more just to reassure you there are alternatives. And of course, if you do want the golden visa, now, now, now is the time to invest. Um, and also, if you're outside of the parameters, please don't worry that the lawyers will be able to help and they will be able to find an alternative for you. OK, so um, we're all here. We're all happy to help in any way that we can. Um, right. I actually have. Um, oh, Karen. Hiya. Um, we we actually know we do everything from start to finish, Clara Karen. So just to confirm for everybody, Karen's question was: So does your agency not just aid in the purchase, but do they also manage properties, or do you recommend an agency for that? The good news is, Karen, we do everything from start to finish. We actually started our property management department a few years ago, and the reason why was we didn't want to just abandon our clients. What we wanted to do was to be with them from the very start of the process. So from the initial thought of investing to make sure that everything is in place to make the, the journey throughout the process as, a, as, as easy as we possibly can. I have a little saying where I say that uh, on the surface we look like swans and underneath we're all paddling away like crazy so that you don't have to do any of the paddling. Everything is just nice and calm and straightforward for you. We then wanted to continue that as well so that it wasn't just that we forget all about you at completion. What we wanted to do was make sure that we took you through the whole of the journey. So our property management department will manage the property. They will market the property. Um, we have a great crew of cleaners so that you do not need to worry. You literally um, hand over the property to us. We have the fantastic girls in the department. What they will do is they will care for your property through everything. They will be there for any kind of emergencies to make sure that the property is aired for you. And of course, to make sure that it's marketed worldwide to get the best rental return that they can. You don't have to rent. Um, so if you don't want to rent, that's not a problem. But if you still want to take advantage of the property management, you are very, very welcome to do so. So, uh, of course, we'll, we'll help in any way that we can with that. So feel free. Um, so hopefully that will answer your, your Karen question. Um, Jennifer, I think you had a question as well. No, it was just to say hello. So that's all good. Um, I think we're covering the questions, which is great. Um, the type of management fee, what I'll do, Karen, if it's okay with you, um, because that's actually a slightly different department to me, and what I don't want to do is give you the wrong information, I will ask my colleague Yasmin, who is in the office today, to give you a call, and what she can do then is she can explain all about the fees, um, how it's applied, how it's determined, and the differences as well, so that we make sure that it's personalized to you, if that would be okay with you. I'll ask um, Yasmin to give you a, a call and do that. Okay, um, so perfect. If um, anybody does have any questions, as I said, we actually have, um, we've got an amazing, can't call him a colleague because obviously legal, we, we don't associate ourselves with any particular lawyers. We have to do it so that everybody is free. However, we have the Anto Antonio, who is absolutely fantastic um, uh, from the law firm. He is amazing. He has helped many of our international clients. And he has Melanie on hand, who is a phenomenal expert on all of the different visas. And she will be more than happy to assist you in any way that she can. Completely confidential, you know, completely confidentially. Um, so hopefully that will be a benefit as well. So uh, thanks, Antonio, for joining us. Really do appreciate it. Um, I'm sure that uh, both Antonio and his team will be more than happy to go into a lot more detail and make it very, very personal to you as well. So uh, thanks, Antonio. Glad that you were able 
to join us as I know that you, you did have um, some clients there, so that's good. So anything at all, um, anything that anybody needs, please do feel free to contact us afterwards. And uh, Karen, what I will do is I will ask uh, Yasmin to give you a call and what she will do then, she will explain everything to you in a lot more depth with regards to property management. So hopefully we're gonna do another one of these in another few weeks. So if anybody has any suggestions what they would like to know about, we'll be more than happy to, to have that as a subject and then we're not keeping you too long today. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully it was beneficial and that you've got some information that you can actually take forward and uh, hopefully you will contact us and we will be the ones that will be able to take you forward through your property purchase or even if it's for your, your property management, it will be our pleasure to assist you. So thank you very much from Marbella Dream Living. Have a fantastic day. Have an amazing weekend. It's almost Friday. And uh, anybody planning to come to Spain soon, get that bikini, get your flip-flops, get everything ready. The sun is shining. Thanks very much for coming today and really appreciate your time. Take care now. Bye-bye.